All right, what gear was that? That's first gear. First gear. It still works, guys. All right, we'll shut it off. And we need to tell them what's happened because it's been it's been a pretty crazy few days. Guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode on the 79 series auto conversion. Hopefully you saw the video that went up last night and that was genuinely the first time we took it off the hoist and see to try to see if it was going to roll. We did take it out here and run it up and down the end of the driveway just to make sure nothing was binding and that it was doing what we needed it to do. But we didn't want to take it out on the road last night. There was an issue with the tail lights which we've now fixed and we also want to put the interior back together because it was in a few pieces, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's a couple of bits missing. Who would have thought wiring in a uh, completely standalone transmission system would involve taking a car apart? Anyway, uh, Brock, where are we at? What have we got right now? So I don't think the guys have actually seen, they haven't seen the oil cooler. Oh, yeah. This so is what we've set up for Mac. We've got a large oil cooler. It's about 50 mil thick. Uh, right up front, plenty of airflow. Keep that transmission cool. Yeah, so uh, something that a lot of the comments or people that have been messaging me about this transmission have come through. They've got a lot of concerns about heat. And although I haven't used one of these transmissions in a car with 37s like this, they don't slip like the Toyota autos. The converters lock up a lot earlier, and we'll try and show you that once we get out on the road. And, and honestly, the cars that we've put them in so far, I, uh, they are street cars or drift cars, but it's, it's hard to get the transmissions up to temperature. It's hard to get them over the 80 or 90 degrees. So we'll see what happens in this thing. Cause I mean, this has to put a bit more load on it driving around the yeah, street than- exactly. Even just cruising, it'll be more load than what we normally see on our street cars, our sedans and whatnot. Now, something I do just want to clarify, this is not the kit that's going to go out to the retail customers. In fact, we were sort of debating whether to tell you guys about this and I'm very honest with the YouTube channel. There's a part in there that is not ours. We've had to buy it from another kit, from another transmission conversion, and then we've had to modify it. Yeah, we had to modify it quite a bit, and... It's not as strong as we'd like. It's not what we want to put in our kit to sell to people, but it's perfect for testing, prototyping, all that kind of good stuff. Yes. Yeah, basically, we need to get this car driving. Mac needs to do a few things to it before his main trip. So we wanted him to do basically just street testing over the next couple of weeks, and then we might do some high-load testing with the parts that are currently in it, and just see if we can break anything. In fact, I think it's time we take up a proper drive, get it up to that 60, 70, 80 k's an hour. Let's go for a drive. Make sure nothing weird happens and uh, go from there. All right, guys, I'm gonna set up the laptop so you've got some data to watch while we do this and I'll explain the turbo lamic process. It's, it's, it's so high. Oh, actually, we'll just show them as well. So in Mac setup, we've gone for a race style sequential shifter. Now it's probably overkill, but Mac is a bit overkill, as you can tell by his ute. And this is basically just forwards to downshift, pull it back to upshift. However, remember this isn't automatic, so you don't have to touch this. We, why weren't you moving anyway? Uh, and to get it into reverse, it's just a double tap forwards. We'll show you that here. We currently have, in fact, would you mind just turning the key on? Yep. I know the GoPro is not gonna like it, but we have the gear display here. The gear display shows what gear you're currently in. You can see it's in P for park. Program mode two, and that is one of the eight shift modes that we can program in, and we will dial in once we get a bit of time with it. The transmission oil is currently at 47 degrees, and that's it. And it will show if there's any errors or issues with the transmission through there. It is, it's an older looking display, but suits this car, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so strangely strange. enough. Uh, and just so everybody knows, we have the turbo Lamic. Hang on, we're gonna have to do a bit of a flip up here. You can just see it there. And yeah, don't lose any glove box. And I think that's a pretty good spot. Uh, we are looking at center consoles as an option for these conversion kits, but it's something that we wanna to speak to each customer about because some people might want this style of shifter where you're gonna have a manual looking thing. Some people might want an auto and we can have different types of shifters. Okay, I guess I better hook this laptop up and we'll go for a drive. Let's do it. All right, guys, so hopefully you can see this little readout that we're currently using just to monitor a few things on the transmission computer. Uh, the main things that I'll try and get you guys to pay attention is the slip. So the more this needle comes around is the more the transmission is slipping. We're also gonna monitor the amount of torque going through the gearbox. We can see RPM. And obviously all of this information is very important to ensure that the computer knows how to change gear smoothly. Now we haven't tuned it yet. This is the first real drive where you're gonna be able to watch the transmission learn because it does continually adapt as well. These turbo lamics, they're much like a standard transmission. You are continually letting it learn how to change gear smoothly. And the reason they do that is it adapts for clutch wear. Now, where it does get a bit iffy is if you fit a gearbox that's got really bad or old clutches in it, it'll be jerky off the bat, but generally the lamic will learn around it. We'll just see how this goes. Last night when we drove it, we let it go. I think it went first, second, third. Yep. Um, it seemed to do everything fine. It didn't bang into gear, it didn't slip. 
but we're just going to see how we go um, and don't hold it against us if it doesn't go to plan. Uh, another few things we've got to sort out our calibrations were in the TCU. We are basically monitoring the boost levels in the engine, the RPM, and what's the other thing we're monitoring? Throttle position. Throttle position or pedal position. Pedal position, yeah. Now, those three bits of information are, again, what it uses to make the shift, how you might want to do it. Obviously, if you've got 5% pedal, you're not trying to shift very aggressively. Regardless of RPM, regardless of how much boost it's making, if you're going up a hill and the engine's making a thousand newton meters, but you've got 5% throttle, you're not racing, so it'll shift appropriately. But on the flip side, if you're making 100 newton meters and you're wide open throttle, it will shift aggressively. So it, there's a lot that goes into it. These are really clever controllers and they are available at 8speed.com.au. <laughs> All right, um, start it up, Brock. And we can see here, we have got live data logging going. Obviously the transmission is not moving. The car is not moving. So we've got full slip at the moment. There is nothing on the pressure side. Again, we're not moving. According to this, the engine is currently making 13, 14 Newton meters. This is what we might need to calibrate. And we're sitting at 650 RPM. And I guess, do you want to show them how they put it into drive? Oh, that's really easy. Let's pull that down. That's it. Done. And we're in drive. Ready to Hope, rip. Hopefully you guys can see it, but that is second gear automatic. Now this car with the 37s, I'm not sure if this is going to work in a second gear start off. Yeah, well, it's something we need to fine tune. It is. We've got 37 inch tyres and 3.9 yeah. diffs. We'll see how it goes. Let's. I guess just try a second gear take up. Yeah. In a factory application, that's what we would do. See how it takes up. Oh, it's nice and gentle. See, it's not slipping already. Already locked up. But take it out on the road. Take it out on the road. I kind of want to see it first, so we'll pull out and we'll do a first gear take up. Also, I think this car is going to be great for showing people what the gearbox is doing because the thing is so noisy with the exhaust yeah, on it. It sounds great. All right, let's do oh, a first. Do it first. And just let it shift. Yeah, We're in automatic mode. Oh, I cannot believe how smooth that is. Amazing. We're not getting any slip. Pressures are good, making around 100 newton meters at about 1700 RPM. Fifth gear then. That was fifth. That was fifth. Down to third. Actually, you can see the gear here. Third gear, fourth gear. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Fifth. These controllers, bro, they just work. Incredible. So this is the first one that Brock's really been involved in seeing how you start up, how you start the car for the first time and how they drive. We've got a nice downshift up in here, a little bit of engine braking with the foot brake. That's something you don't get with the Toyota boxes. As no. soon as you touch the brake, they open the converter yeah. so you don't get, you don't get compression braking. Oh, I just love it. Okay, so guys, we're going up a big hill. We'll see how this calculates how it needs to shift with the extra load going up the hill. And we're in fifth. Actually, but we'll look on here, it's easier fit. It might not get sick. Oh, it did, we're in sick. No slip, it's just pulled up. It's making the torque, it doesn't need yeah. to shift. I am curious what it's gonna do as we go down the hill. Yeah, well, we're doing 80 now. See, TPS is at 25%, Brock's gonna back off. Still in sixth gear. This is full auto. This is cruise mode. Just touching the brake a little bit. All right, it's downshifting. Giving this engine braking as it's doing it. See, gearbox torque, minus 30 newton meters. So yeah. it even registers the uh, the compression braking. Oh my God, man. All right, well, I wanted to capture the legit first drive out on the street with it. And it's, it's work. I'm shaking. Oh, I'm shaking. <laughs> it's really amazing. There's a few people that want to know how well this works. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to do a little bit more miles on it, and we'll give you guys an update shortly. Okay, we're just going to do a little bit more aggressive acceleration. That is incredible. That is absolutely incredible. Oh, this couldn't feel more like a standard car, surely. That's what they do. This is the fifth one I've installed now. So I've been through this before. Yeah. I know what they're gonna do. The but... realization that an aftermarket whole system can work this well. I, oh, it's just, we're going down a bit of a hill here and we're getting minus 50 newton meters. So that's how much 
engine is, braking. Is engine braking. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Honestly, I didn't notice that that was a thing. I've never really paid attention to it before. Very more prevalent on something like this than the lightweight, small tire sedans. Exactly. Um, and I was just going to say as well, so this is running the Turbolamic diesel base map. Um, the only thing that we've actually configured is the tire size and the diff ratio and it's shifting where it needs to shift. It's not over revving. It's not shifting too early on the it's downshift. It's just working. Absolutely incredible. I can't, I can't wait to see what it's like with a bit more fine tuning. And not that it needs it, but how, how, where, where's the limit? How much better does it get? Okay, so the, the main thing that I was expecting to tune today was further calibration with the torque calculations. Yep. Um, we've done a few estimates for the torque calculation, but looking at that, we've hit about, it looks, We'll pay attention on the next acceleration. Pay attention. So, also, this car does have a multi map program switch. Uh, what program are we in at the moment? We're in the stock plus program at the moment because we don't want to give it too much horsepower just yet, just so we can feel it out before we squeeze it. And the stock power level on these is oh, I'm not about 650 Newton meters. Yeah, I think. something like that. So, we should see around 650 if we were to do a wide open throttle yeah. acceleration. Okay. We might show you guys that shortly. In fact, do you want to try... I want to do a few more miles in automatic mode before we go into sports mode. Yep. If that's all right. Uh, what's the vehicle speed at the moment? 70? 70. 70. Okay, this is reading 72. So we've got the tire size fairly accurate. All right, sweet. See you guys in a second. So we're just going to try taking off in first gear. Um, by standard calibration, these things will take off in second gear like they do in most OEM applications. But I'm just thinking with these huge tires, it might be a little bit more suited to a first gear take up. I'll let you guys watch the telemetry as we do. Okay. So it didn't labor the engine up so much? No, I don't think it's, I think we're on a midpoint where we don't really need the first gear take up. Maybe if you're on a hill, a bit would be better. Sorry, and we are now adapting. So once the oil gets up to normal running temperature, which is over 50 degrees Celsius, the transmission then starts to learn its shifts. So now, that's, this is the first time the Turbo Lamic is actually gonna try and make it shift better. Although I, I can't really fault it. No. It's kind of crazy. The other thing to keep in mind as well, the temperature of the oil affects how well the clutches will bite. And that's something that I've noticed with a few of the other controllers. They don't necessarily take into account oil temp where the Lamic does, which is why I think it's one of the better, better options out there. And yeah, guys, just keep an eye on the slip. We have no converter slip. Well, no transmission slip. That's why I love these transmissions. <laughs> and I don't know why Toyota don't do it, but the, the BMW diesels, if you go and look up the fuel economy ratings on them, they, they just blow the Toyotas out of the water. I went for a drive in a 200 series yesterday, a good mate of mine, Nick, thank you for that. I wanted to, I wanted to feel what the Cruiser automatic was like before really getting into one of these cars. Now, these cars averaging 16 litres per hundred. It's a oh. diesel. Where a BMW... Wait, this thing sounds cool. Doesn't it? We're starting to put a bit, woo! Okay, that was 520 Newton meters then, which is probably about right. Do you, how much throttle were you putting? Oh, in? it was very low throttle. Oh, it was okay. about maybe 40%. It's shifting nicely. This thing rips. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mac. You've built a nice little rig here. Dude, it's just working. Do you want to try some manual shifting? Sure, yeah, let's give it a go. Right. So, I'll put it into manual mode. We've got a little selector here, and we're going to go to program mode three. We're in second gear manual. I'll let you put it into first. So obviously, Mac, when he's hooning off-road, he may be doing some slidey stuff in the sand. He wanted to have the manual shift. Um, we have actually been speaking to a company that's going to sort out some paddles for the steering wheel. Might be paddles. But just let you guys see how this reacts when Brock is manually shifting. We'll see if we get any error codes, any slip issues. The roads are a little bit wet, so we might get some tire slip issues. Okay. I did notice. Actually. Yeah, a little traction control flash before. Should we turn that off? Um, yeah. Actually, you know what? For the sake of the video, uh, let's leave traction leave control on. on. See what happens. Because obviously this car still thinks it's a manual. The engine doesn't know that it's got an automatic in it. We'll see what it does. Oh, 
okay, so I'm gonna pick on it. The second to three, the second to third gear shift wasn't perfect, but the controller's gotta learn. Still learning. See, it's got the A still. All right, the A's oh, just come back. It comes and goes. Um, yeah, it'll only do adaptations when there's a certain amount of torque going through the transmission. Uh, but the three to four shift, perfect. Bit. It's just gotta learn that That's second to three shift. That's also the first time it's ever that done manual shifted. Shift. Yep. With this configuration. It's pretty wild. A bit of downshifting. Dude. Oh, I've, I've, engine braking, downshifting, amazing. I don't know if you can hear that, but you can hear the engine braking working. Oh man. Wait, just congratulations, dude. You've designed this adapter. There's no vibration, there's no rubbing, Not there's no thing. noise. <laughs> I'm gonna go in here because I want to get some lunch. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess we better make sure it works through a drive. No, there's no. What? Will it go through a drive through? I don't know. Matt didn't tell me the minimum height requirement. Wait, Brock, the trans brake still works. We've got to turn that off before we get back to Matt. Hold on, hold her on for a second. Don't let it off. All right, I won't let it off. Oh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Can you do that again? I want to notch the boost pressure. Oh, it makes power. So, all right, I'm going to let go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, these controllers do come uh, with a full trans brake function, so you can pretend to be a drag car if you want. Although, that's probably gonna break something pretty quickly. Or you could do wheelies. Or you could do wheelies. <laughs> we will test the trans brake in this car, but maybe after Max trip. We'll see how we go. Yeah. We'll let him get some K's on it before we <laughs> do anything like that to it. Okay, so we're just leaving the drive through and we're now gonna try sports auto mode. Now, sometimes in some conditions, I think it's a little bit too sporty, especially the petrol setups. So we'll just see how the engine reacts with the default calibration. It should rev it out a lot more, it is, it's holding that gear. Yeah. It's pretty sporty. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely holds the gear though. Roll it on again. Oh my god. Oh, this thing sounds aggressive. Okay, so that's Sports Auto. Let's see how it downshifts. I'm going to shut the window because it's a bit windy. Oh, yeah, much more engine braking. Well, it feels like more engine braking. Yeah, it should. You, What's yeah. it, um, what do we get on that torque reading as we detail? So, minus 60 Where were engine we braking. Around minus 40 was the yeah, most okay. I saw before. So, this would probably be good if you were maybe towing something up and down hills where you'd want a bit more engine braking. Oh, definitely take the load off the braking system for that. In fact, that was something, my friend with the 200 series, uh, it's got a stock tune on it, but he does use it for towing, and he said it's terrible. Coming down to Toowoomba Range, yeah. he has no engine braking, which... Toowoomba Range is not a good place to have no engine braking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, I think we'll leave it in sports mode. The trans is up to 71. Now, a lot of that heat will just be resonating heat from the engine. Obviously, it's bolted to the engine. Um, but how long are we going? We're supposed, this must be a 25 minute drive. Yeah, we've been driving for a while. That's where and the 71's are, 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 it's barely even doing anything. But it's it's just because we don't slip the converter all the time like all these mm -hmm. other autos do. That's what generates the heat. Absolutely. And I found the setting to turn the trans brake off. Sorry, Mac. <laughs> Sorry, Mac. <laughs> You know what? In sports mode, that sort of sounds like you just you're you've got a manual clutch pedal. There. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll get a bit of traction there. <laughs> Spin in the wheels. <laughs> this thing's an animal. All right, I do for the sake of the audience. I would like to do a little bit more load on an acceleration. Yep. Yeah just see if we have any issues. So I know Mac's gonna floor it as soon as he picks it up, so we may as well check it. All right, I'll let you guys see all the telemetry. And you can hear the engine revs, obviously. Suspension's quite soft. It is very soft. It's kind of fun though. <laughs> okay. I think going from a standstill. Still? Yeah, so we can hear it go all the way through the RPM range. So this is a long hill, it's not very tall, but... Go from first as well, I think first, just so we can hear as many shifts as possible. Alright, ready? Yeah, I'm ready.
Okay, we saw 700 newton meters in. Yeah. No, it's, That's I'm probably... just holding that at about 56% throttle. I'm not lifting the shift or anything like that. That's just how it does it. Of course. With a manual, you dip the clutch, you lose boost pressure, then the boost has got to kick oh, back yeah. in. Oh, yeah. That's the main reason for automatics in modern diesels is because you don't lose power between gear changes. So when you're towing something and you change gears and you brr, 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 not with an auto. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it feels like we're going probably quicker than we are, the way it rolls around on this, yeah. these shockies. I really like how soft it is. You do, It's like driving a little monster truck, which I really dig. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds it's so naughty. <laughs> the gearbox pulls the RPMs down on the ship. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. I'm happy. I haven't I haven't tuned it. We're gonna drive past four drive super center now. And we'll give him a little bit. You give him a little bit. Just to flex on him a bit. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Sorry Mac, I'm out flexing on people in your truck, but sweet. <laughs> oh, um, there's a 79 series in there. Sorry about the gearbox. <laughs> Sorry about your manual, mate. Alright, we're going uphill. That's 750 newton meters. Oof. Nearly got to the speed limit. Almost. Nearly. That was, <laughs> that was pretty good. It's doing what you want it to do. And it's shifting. It, it's firm. It's definitely firm. We you can tell it's a sports mode. It is in sports mode. I, yeah. was, I was about to say, I could probably wind it down a little bit. But we're in sports no, I mode. Think, I think in sports mode, you're, you're happy for it to grab like that. Can you do a similar acceleration? Yep. Because we haven't, we didn't load it up like that in, in, normal, normal. in normal mode. So yeah. I'll put it back down to normal mode. Oh, it shifted oh, straight it. away. Yeah, yep. it must have been on its, in its range. So it's gone from engine braking, put it into normal mode, and then it's freed up and gone back to relaxed mode. All right. Okay, we'll see how it sounds on the shift in normal mode. Hopefully it won't do that. Oh, it it's, it's like half. Yeah. I but when you're giving it the berries like that, you don't want it to shift soft. It's still firm, but it's not banging in the gear. Yeah, no, it's definitely like not that. uncomfortable. It's what you'd expect. And again, 40 Newton meters, 40 negative Newton meters engine braking in normal mode. So you don't get that. Yeah, it doesn't pull you up. Yeah. That was 800 newton meters. <laughs> All right. I don't know. We may need to tweak this a little bit. We might do some more driving, but dude, we've completed the first drive. Great success. It seems to have held. I wish I knew how much power this was making, and it's it just dosed. Yeah, it did. <laughs> um. Oh, all right. I'm honestly, I'm very happy. Um, this probably isn't much of a sales pitch video, but I just wanted to show you guys the process and what we're going through in the back end. We've got a lot of work to do before we're going to be comfortable to give this as a retail product. Yep. But this is the genuine first drive. That's pretty successful. As far as first drives of anything modified like this goes, this is amazing. Did and before we go, can we just show them the park, how the park works? Ah, yes, okay, so because we have this sequential style shifter, if you go for an OEM shifter, you have a normal park button, but obviously Mr. Racecar over here doesn't have the park button, but you wanna show them how it's done, Brock? So we're in drive now, and uh, we just flick it up to neutral, and then hit this button, we'll label this with park later on, but hit that button, put it into park. And it won't roll away. It won't roll away. It doesn't matter how bad your 79 series handbrake is, notoriously bad it won't roll away that's awesome so yeah you're on the side of a hill trying to do some four-wheel drive and you want to jump out and just make sure you can do something just push that park button and actually just show them so we're in park so the yep. car won't roll and then how do you go back to drive done done and then we can show them reverse too oh yeah go to reverse so neutral reverse, reverse. just double pump it for reverse i'm i'm pretty happy there was a bit of there was a bit of pressure on our shoulders that this was going to work it was a bad idea to try and do this project over Christmas with all the shops shut. But the parts for the retail kit, hopefully we'll have them in the next couple of weeks. And uh, Mac's going to put this through its torture test in the meantime. And you guys will see it on his channel, hopefully. All right. Thanks, Brock. And thank you all for watching. Say goodbye. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brock's not very good at goodbye, so we'll let his puppy do it. I get sad when I have to say goodbye. <laughs>
Hey, Barry. Leading a Max truck. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to lick it. Nah, we can't do it. I'll, I'll work a way, a way around that. Oh. Just um, quick shift in a second. Yeah, as soon as it spins, just go straight to second. <laughs> Diesel now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is man. bad.